I'll bet anything this is the key to Sky's little private room. Sorry, darling, just some papers and files I had to go through. Nothing important, but it has to be done. A little house cleaning? Mm-hmm. It makes me feel accomplished. Oh, but you are accomplished in so many ways. <laughs> you are a saucy wench. Come here. <laughs> you better let me help you finish packing or you'll never get out of here. Well, much as I hate to see you go, I've got about half a dozen things in the works. And if I don't take care of them, I'm not going to have any free time tomorrow. What are you doing tomorrow? Oh, didn't I tell you? I, uh, um, I'm getting married. You're kidding. Mm -hmm. Well, fancy that. And now, you are banished, much as I hate the idea. Okay, just let me finish uh, packing a few things. Oh, not that suit. I'm going to be wearing that today. Um, this suit is, is so heavy for this time of year, don't you think? Maybe you should wear your silk gray shirt. Anything that the bride wishes. You know, I had no idea that you were so domestically inclined. You really are a woman of many talents. Yeah, yeah, I think so. It's a lot better than cold pizza like before. Very funny. I'm going to give you both bread and water. Good discipline. No, I don't need it. That's what you think. What's your day like, Nancy? Well, I expect it's going to be rather busy around the office. And um, then I'm going to be doing some shopping for the wedding tomorrow. Just some little things that I need. How about lunch? Hmm? Oh, yes, I'd like that. And uh, there's something else that I'm going to be doing. Like what? I'm going to the county jail. What for? I want to try and see Dr. Bryson. Well, I'm not so sure. That's a good idea. If I were you, I wouldn't do it. No, I don't think it's a good way to spend the afternoon either. Well, why don't you think it's a good idea? Well, it seems to me that all it can do is just revive a lot of very unpleasant memories. And frankly, I don't think you should put yourself through it. Besides, Bryson has refused to see every other visitor. Uh, do you really think he'll consent to see you under the circumstances? No, I'm not sure he will see me, that's true. But I just have a feeling that I should try Mike. It's because of Valerie. She's heartbroken that he won't see her. And she doesn't know why he won't see her, so I just thought I might be able to persuade him otherwise. I mean, after all, she is his daughter. It isn't as though she's a stranger. I don't know, Nancy. Uh, putting yourself through all that uh, just for Valerie's sake? Do, do you think that, that Bryson is keeping quiet just to protect Valerie or, or to protect himself? No, I don't think there's any question he's trying to protect her. After all, he is relatively safe in jail. That's what Cliff Nelson thinks also. What Bryson fears most is the danger to his daughter. Well, in that case, I don't think that Bryson should talk to Val at all. Let well enough alone? Definitely. Well, actually, your view and mine don't really matter. Officially, he can't let a criminal act go unpunished just because he fears some sort of reprisal against his daughter or himself. Yeah, look, I know it's a tricky situation, Mike, but um, I just don't think that, that Valerie should see him. I think that she needs some kind of protection. I think what she needs right now more than anything else is her father. I mean, just some sign from him, just... Just to know that, that he, he loves her and that he needs her. I really like your style, Nancy. All right, if you feel that it will help Valerie, give her some peace of mind. Go ahead. If anyone can persuade Bryson, I imagine it would be you. Well, I, I, I just feel I have to, Mike. He may not see me. I know you'll understand. I, I, I really just have to try.
brings you here so bright and early this morning? Oh, well, I'm uh, here on business. And, I mean, uh, business. Something about my father. Oh, no, there's nothing new in that area. But I'm working on it. Don't worry. I, um... I came here because uh, this is Monticello's newest and best salon of photography, isn't it? Yes. Well, is this not the place in which I can get my picture taken? It is. Then I am uh, ready and willing, nay, I should say, eager to face the lights and the camera. I, of course, shall provide the action. Please, Mr. Crown isn't here now. He's not going to be back till this afternoon. I can make an appointment for you, though. Uh, Valerie, you are a photographer, aren't you? And I'm sure you're twice as pretty as Mr. Crown. You probably take better pictures than he does, too. All right, if you're willing to settle for second best. Sit on the lower stool. Now, tell me what this is for. I assume you want a formal portrait. Very formal. The uh, Bar Association is featuring me on this month's cover of their magazine. Mm -hmm. Sort of like a tourney of the month kind of thing. So it should be formal, serious, but uh, not unpleasant. You know, handsome, oh, but, but not pretty. Maybe amusing. Oh, I don't want too much levity. You know, I think maybe you should focus that light a little lower so that you could contrast the, the, the serious, deep-set eyes against the fun-loving dimple on my chin. Ah, just make me look the way that I am, huh? <laughs> Handsome. Attractive. Devilish. You are full of yourself this morning, aren't you? Well, shouldn't I be? I guess so. That's quite a compliment. To be chosen for the cover of the Bar Association magazine. What's it called? The Bar Sinister. Come on. Oh, really? That's its name. I know. It's a very strange name, but it's a very important magazine. It's read in St. Louis, Chicago, New York. Bet you Draper will even see it over in Europe where he's traveling. You know, you're very pretty when you're so intent on your work. Well, I'm quite curious about it, Cliff. And the studio's gotten very busy very quickly, so there's a lot to do. What about your social life? I mean, you must get bored with the same dull routine of parties and weddings and confirmations. Which is, there could be more interesting and exciting things you could do with your days or nights. No, raise your chin a little. Which one? Either will do. <laughs> I said there could be more interesting things you could do with your days and nights. Have dinner with me. French food, candlelight, wine, sparkling conversation. I'll pick up the tab. <laughs> What more could a girl ask? Nothing, really. What, you mean you'll do it? Oh, hi, Val. Curses, foiled again. <sighs> hi, Kelly. Hi, Cliff. What are you doing here? Maneuvering. What? I'm having my picture taken. Can't you see Smile. that? Smile! I'm having my picture taken. Now, now, leave us alone, Leah. There's an artist at work here. Yeah, I can see that. Okay. There we are. I think you should have something out of these you can use. Great. I have the uh, proofs will be ready at six if you want to pick them up then. Oh, terrific. I'll pick him up at six, uh, when I pick you up, huh? Really, it'll be an unforgettable evening. Well, I... Oh, uh, you can't say no. You forget, I'm a homeless orphan. In that case, I, uh, I guess I'll see you at six, then. Well, I... I'd love to stay, but I, I got an appointment at the DA's office, uh... Thank you. My car is a real stickler for punctuality. Well, Valerie, I'll see you at uh, 6 o'clock then. Bye, Kelly. It was uh, nice seeing you. I mm -hmm. wish I could stay around and enrich your life, but uh, I've got to depart now. Victoria. That's what I'm told. He's, he's a pretty funny, festive type of guy anyway. <laughs> Actually, but beneath that clown exterior is a very shrewd lawyer. Well, that's comforting. He's helping me with some legal problems. About my father. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. Kelly, I, I really enjoyed bumping into you yesterday. And meeting Jody Travis. It was very nice of you to ask me to join you. It was very nice of you to join us. I wasn't intruding? No. No, not at all. It's a good thing you came along when you did. It's going to help pull Jody out of the doldrums. She doesn't seem like a very happy girl, does she? She's carrying the weight of the world on her shoulders right now. She's awful terrified of letting a whole bunch of people down if she's not successful. Is she afraid of letting you down? No. Not really. The person she's really afraid of letting down is Gavin Wally. She wants and needs his approval. studio just thought I'd stop 
find say hi. But did you stop by for any particular reason? Yeah, it seems kind of pointless. What? I was going to ask if you were uh, free for dinner. Obviously not. Oh, Kelly, I'm sorry. But that's so nice of you. I like you so much. something for a <clears throat> female acquaintance of mine. You see, my dear, I am keeping secrets from you. What? In that box is a surprise for you. For me? Mm -hmm. What is it? Well, now, if I told you, it wouldn't be a surprise, would it? So you can plead with me and wheedle, but you're not going to get it until tomorrow. And I'm going to make you give me a solemn vow that you won't peek. All right, I promise I won't peek. I mean, you know me, I wouldn't want to ruin a surprise. late. Eleven minutes late? Well, actually, I was here three minutes early, but you know, the elevator's down in the lobby. Okay, are so okay, Cliff, what's in your mind? If it's about the Gregory case, I thought we had an agreement. Well, actually, it was about the Gregory case uh, before, but now I've got a better idea. Only take five minutes of your time. You've got five minutes. It's the Bryson case. What about it? Well, it's like this, Mike. I know that you want to find out information about Dr. Bryson, about what he was doing in Europe. That's why he gets Gabe Draper that fabulous job jet-setting around from Paris to Rome to Switzerland. <laughs> All paid for by the district attorney's office. More or less. Incidentally, that reminds me, you know, that's left me without a law partner. I mean, I gotta handle that whole office by myself, alone. I mean, there's only so much that one man can do, despite his abilities. You know, I have 25 cases to handle. Cliff, why don't you just hire somebody to fill in for Draper until he gets back? Hmm. Huh. Why didn't I think of that? Well, I'm sure the thought would have occurred to you, eventually. Now, how about getting back to the purpose of your visit? Huh? What purpose? Would the name Bryson help? Oh, right, 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 the Bryson. Uh, well, as you know, well, actually, because of you, uh, I'm helping Valerie Bryson. It's, and I come upon an idea that I think will be able to help you and Draper and the CIA and the FBI and everybody in the Bryson case. Well, I thought it would be a good point for me to go underground, undercover, as it were. You know what I mean? Like, 
like, find out information from Valerie. You know, what better source than the, the guy's own daughter? Pretty inventive, isn't it? Oh, it's inventive, all right. But as you know, I've met Valerie Bison myself, and I don't think she has any knowledge about her father's past that would be helpful to us. Besides, I recommended you as her counsel. Now, what does that make you? A double agent. And an unethical cad. Oh, yeah, you're right. What? What? Well, you mean I can't date Valerie Bryson in charge of the district attorney's office? I'm afraid not, Cliff. Well, then, uh, I'll just have to spend my own money. <laughs> See you, Mike. Goodbye, Cliff. Hi, uh, Miss Bryson? Yes. We split the telephone earlier this morning. I'm Gray Armstrong. Oh, of course, Mr. Armstrong. How are you? Please, uh, sit down. Thank you, thank you. It's a nice little studio you have here. Thank you. We've just opened, you know. Yes, I know. <coughs> Mr. Armstrong, I have to admit, I'm still puzzled about your call. Are you sure it's not Mr. Crown that you want to see? Yes, I'm quite sure. You see, I represent an international photo service. You see, we supply photographs for many different companies, both here and abroad. Newspapers, news services, television, film industry, and so forth. Well, right now, we're looking for experienced photographers to represent us in Europe. Preferably young, energetic, and with experience of European locations and some experience of the languages. It sounds like a very exciting job. Well, Miss Bryson, look, I have no wish to pry in terms of salary, but I guarantee you that whatever you're earning here at Crown Studios, my company will multiply by ten. <laughs> now, beyond salary, and more important in terms of your future. You're going to be receiving an international reputation. Mr. Armstrong, how can you possibly be offering me this job? Uh, you don't even know my work. On the contrary. Your work's not entirely unknown in Europe. Besides, my superiors were so impressed, they've sent me here with this offer while I'm in the country. Very kind of you, and extremely flattering. I just... Well, I have spent so many years in Europe. I'm back now in what I consider my home. I have family here, and I have this job. I really, I really have no intention of making a change now or in the near future. But that's very definite. I see. I'm well, sorry. then the loss is ours. But before you make up your mind definitely, perhaps you will reconsider, and well, if that time comes, I'm going to leave you with my car. Thank you. Goodbye. It just occurred to me, with all the stuff that I've got to do, I may not see you before the ceremony. I don't know if I'll survive. <laughs> 